Yo, this is the Skane Vein Podcast, episode five. We're doing this a week later, but we traveled back in time and we're talking about TE and TI in this video and what's the difference between them. Now, the for a preamble, so my first thought is that TE usually describes things in the way that they learned them or that they do them, while TI can sort of describe things in the way that they understand them. So TI will have more of a time in sort of speaking like it does and sort of trying to formulate it and justifying how they know things from first principles, while TE will have more of a time describing how to do things. And they see as the sort of knowability of it, not how you can justify how you know something, but how you justify how you do something. So it's from two different perspectives, two different verbs relations, which you can see why one is more extroverted, one is more introverted, because knowing, if you think about it, doesn't even require doing anything in the first place. Like uh, I could know something and it's known. But doing something requires action. Knowing something you see with the first principles sort of stuff, like a, a law of the excluded middle, a law of identity. Uh, I forget what the third law is. Dominic might know it. Contradiction. Yeah, law of contradiction. Non-contradiction. Non-contradiction. It, it's that how you set things up you know, without them even doing things. So the noun focused version of it, uh, it has to be at least locally, you know, correct, you know. So you could have antonyms like something being both hot and cold, but it's in a relative sense. So maybe something is hot enough to, I don't know, melt snow, but cold enough to like not burn you. Or something like that, right? Yeah. It's very interesting. Like, because T and TI, since they're both thinking functions, they share similar differences from other functions, but they also share different similarities in relation to each other. So there's this feature of, like, uh, T would, it's sort of like more of an interface, like Eric Strauss put it. Like, it regions and imprints like different orientations, different positions and coordinates. And then it tries to like ration out either through categorization or familiarity through action, like different end states, like where you want to arrive at the goals, so to speak. That's why IT is so goal oriented because it's all about effectiveness. Like how do you translate? How do you get from some procedural knowing, procedural encounter as far as like how you engage something and perspectival knowing how you, you're situated to see something towards a different state? So its orient is outside of itself where it molds the world while molding itself. While TI sort of like adapts itself to the world, it's sort of like almost like at its height, it can constantly keep modifying itself, improving itself in terms of how it uh, engages with rules or algorithms, how uh, it like, uh, how it like it, TI has a troubleshooting feature to it. It's more experimental. In a sense, T is experimental in a sense of like, how do I fit this square block into this square hole? Like it's more constructive in that sense of like putting, it's more like uh, tactically coherent, where it's like the coherence is more angled in. It's more present with you. How it's coherent is like you can fit it together directly. It's more easy. It's more apparent to you. While TI is more like, it will be more precise. I think DJ Granville gave the metaphor of like, TI is sort of like trying to unlock a door with like a needle or something like you try to like knit uh, pick a lock so it's more precise and you sort of like keep wrangling in until something clicks or yeah i think i think there's a match to it where with language i i see it as well how do you learn stuff right yeah and how do you establish agreement agreement is kind of like you know, whatever agreement does. And so 
with TE, the agreement will be in like what you can and can't do. Uh, with TI, it will be, you know, how viable it is for learning more stuff. So TI is a slower function because it naturally gets at more stuff. And that gets into what we were talking about at the end of the podcast, last podcast, about how it kind of works in the quality and quantity dimension, where I think SI people tend to be a bit more like slow talking. Yeah. So SI and NI. And I don't know. Like it, it can be hard to sort of establish this as a bit rate, establish this as an actual, you know, evidence for something, because what is fast and slow in a relative sense? And, you know, what is personality in a relative sense too? Are you linked to a personality or can you like change your personality? And what's the viability of functions and archetypes? It, are they really real? Or are they sort of uh, the sort of metastasized, you know, version of characters? Are they us sort of applying this sort of fictional conception of like types of people to people and sort of saying, oh, you're limited to this, which uh, with MBTI and its viability in the first place, that interests me. And I think that itself links to TETI categorizing how things work you know in our is our describing of how things work how things work too oh shit yeah it's uh there's also like how you're approaching it i think i watched a recent i listened to a recent podcast uh personality hacker where antonio and joel they were talking and joel gave the metaphor of like a, a type or sort of like a f uh, exercise machine that targets certain muscles while personality is sort of like the overall dynamic. It's more of the organic or functional muscle. Like the fact that you can do lunges and squats without a machine, or you can do push-ups that target different muscles while a bench press will just target the chest mainly or something like that. So the type is like targeting a muscle. It's targeting some feature of yourself, some category within yourself while the personality is sort of like the overall integration, you, you yourself as a whole, all the domains that comprise you. And I think this is where T and TI come in because they both categorize in different ways. And like you can say like to talk about a topic is to like interface with it and to deliberate, deliberate on it as far as how to understand or use or what to do with it or how to transform it or how to let yourself be transformed in relation to it. How do you conform? Like there's a feature of conformity to it too. And that's how I was re relating to it, how like TI conforms itself to things. It's about, it's like conformity. That's why it links with SBE too, which makes it adaptive. Or it's like, oh, figure out the rule, then it'll implement the rule and run with it. So that's how it can be when it's active, when you're actually using it. While TE, when it's understanding, it can categorize very well. It can like uh, get at, what is the particularity, the peculiar, the peculiarity, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I always hate that word that gets you to like make something what it is that makes something like, like helps you understand it. Get, it gives you an optimal grip on it as John Fabricki puts it of like, you have a category of dog as opposed to just animal. And you're able to like, just have that and interact with it. You have like a taxonomy of different things relative to each other. With, with, um, T types, my general understanding is like of it's similar to men and women, how like men sort of prefer stuff and the like knowledge of things yeah. and stuff like that. So sort of hobbies overall too, which kind of links into this whole sort of weird thing about personality where we kind of link it to like accomplishment and to like what you do, what your interests are. And that's kind of your depth is like, you're kind of like ideas themselves can become like stuffified and yeah. sort of depersonalized. Yeah. Like functions are that themselves, or they could even be personalized sort of, uh, you know, function, general perception of stuff that is made more personal. Uh. 
like say uh in beauty and the beast you have the candelabras that can speak and have eyes and ears and shit so 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 don't knock down the door so you don't knock down the door like king sosa you don't know sir i'm gonna be in that like a potion what oh fuck but it links into the different sort of functions and i think what is the do category generally the do category of doing stuff because i think you know we have knowing and doing but generally doing is more valuable because we think of ourselves as doing stuff yeah and so then there's a sort of uh goods centered chauvinism the article i read that in i forget where it was where it was but it was some sort of website but then the website itself sort of it connected to me because i was like you know with these forums with uh the the purpose so to speak of the internet which we think of things as purposeful and purposive and all this stuff but they don't really have to be they can just be connection sort of uh you know communication and stuff like that and yeah. that's saying form over function right it's saying this podcast we're doing it's just us having fun it's not us actually like doing anything you know explicitly useful right yeah but it's us kind of exchanging words like they're fluids or some shit and making the mixture and saying, Honestly, man. have this brew, sir. And it's like alcohol, basically. Yeah, it's like basically like chemistry. And that's where like uh, you get that with the... Because the thinking functions, they tend to have a sort of like instrumentalist and objectification to them. Like they tend to like they'll treat almost every single thing they're dealing with as like an object to be engaged or as an activity to, or even as a, even act, an activity becomes like structured in some manner where you can phase it into why wow, you have something to say. Yeah. Because like I was thinking about, about activity itself and I was thinking TI has this sort of um, if you look online, right. And you look at the people sort of, with time wise sort of things why is introversion the way it is and people think it's like preference but you could also see it as just the bare cyclicity of things how much time they take like for instance if your computer is like slowing down you're not like oh it prefers to be slow you're like oh it's just slow so these functions are slow that sort of quantity they admit of different types of qualities is like different so like introverted functions just spend more time alone as it were they spend more time perceiving or thinking or feeling or intuiting and stuff like that and how do we even judge like introversion and extroversion if they're actually things you know there's criticism itself of that which i mean you could say oh, you're not actually an introvert, you're just socially anxious, which, okay, well, you can be both. And then, you know, it could be saying, you know, that's true in a sense. It's true, you know, that you're more socially anxious than you are an introvert, because that's saying, at least with respect to utility, you should see yourself more as socially anxious, right? Because you saying you're an introvert is just an excuse. It's like, um, what was that problem you uh, spoke to me about? About like, Gaethje? out of smoke? Gaethje problem? Like you see a sheep and you think it's a sheep, but then it turns out to be a sheep dog. But behind you were like way ahead of me on that. Huh? But yeah, you said you said Gaethje before I even like, uh, but yeah, so knowing something is the case but for the wrong reason but then what is the wrong reason so we sort of see forms and apply a function to them and this is sort of how identity works is that we see oh i want to be this kind of person then we're like i am this kind of person right it's circular 
it's not actually there's this type of person or that type of person. People just like to talk about themselves or to learn about other people. Um, and to like experience other people because they like socializing or they don't like socializing. Um, and I think this is what makes introversion and extroversion such hard things to talk about because I think it simplifies things down to like, you know, if I don't like to spend time with other people, then I'm an introvert. And if I do like to spend time with other people, then I am an extrovert. Where I don't think extroversion and introversion are really with regard to your orientation towards other people in the first place. Because I think you can spend time with people in an introverted sort of way. Yeah. You know, like, for instance, uh, us speaking like this is sort of engaging with, like, TI, obviously, and with kind of, like, you know, our own thought process in a sort of way that we wouldn't be, you know, basically how you speak to some people is different from how you speak to other people. And so that's a whole simplification with introversion and extroversion is it says, oh, you know, every time with people is extroversion and every time without people is extroversion, which isn't true. You can you can do extroverted thinking while not being around people, but it just happens to have more utility for other people. And you can sort of think in an extroverted feeling sort of way when you're not around people, but it just happens to have more utility for other people because it's faster, because it's less inside of yourself. Do you get what I mean by that? Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's also... How much time did we have, by the way? Uh, we just, we probably have like 20 minutes. That's cool. I was thinking oh. about that much. Yeah. So uh, it's also... Um... Like, if you factor in the thinking functions, because a lot of what you're talking, you're while you're talking, you're sort of like making your categories more, I guess, fluid or permeable, as I call them. Like you, you let them be open to receive certain things, or you let them be open to let certain things leave. Like I use the example of in my "What Is a Woman" video of ionic and covalent bonds, where if you have a category, there are certain uh, properties that they may share with each other if they're compared or in contrast with each other, and there are properties that they may repel or attract to themselves and stuff and this keeps things more dynamic and fluid and so the thinking functions they sort of like when it comes to category uh depending on whether your orient is to know or your orient is to achieve a goal or to or if your goal is to know or if your knowing is about understanding a goal or understanding how to get to a goal you see how their style, you see how they're different like stylizations of each. They're constantly modifying each other and presenting each other with uh sort of like like that's that's the thing, that's one of the things I constantly keep noticing. Where it's just like when people are when things are being shared or when a topic is being engaged, they're like different ways with uh how the functions work where you can characterize them. That's why I use the example of like same difference and, and different similarity where you can always find a play of difference and similarity with functions. And depending on what you latch onto, because right now I'm, I'm trying to get at this with the thinking function, because I'm mainly doing TI right now and some NI to like get at this because I'm perceiving something. I'm perceiving similarities, but I'm also perceiving differences. And I'm seeing how like diff di certain differences are stylized in a way that's similar or are stylized in diff as different flavors, so to speak, or different colors and certain, and it's the same with, their contrast or like difference and similarity can be different but difference and similarity can also be similar and so on oh, it's just, dominant. Fuck. i know it's it gets so confusing if you actually try to put it into words but it's something that for me i just notice it's easier for me to notice mentally it reminds me um patterns so speaking about speaking and about speaking styles it reminds me of sort of like we have this sort of um like who who provides value in this world and why do we value value in the first place why are we talking about value we could talk about things other than value too we could talk about anything and then we would respond with anything and we could talk about anything with anyone 
insofar as they're willing to talk about it with us, right? Yeah. So I was thinking, uh, works like by uh, David Foster Wallace. I feel like they kind of, it's meta fiction in that it goes into the meta of like, what does it mean for something to be fiction or nonfiction? And so that's a whole sort of, I feel like his characters make fun of the idea of there being characters. Like uh, in in the movie with him and, uh, uh, well, he's uh, the guy from How I Met Your Mother. And then there is the uh, Jewish guy or whatever. Uh, I forget what the movie is called, but he talks about, you know, I don't want to give the impression that other people's inner lives are like lesser than mine. So I found that interesting. I found it interesting how in David Foster Wallace, you have a character a person who had like a lot of empathy and a lot of insight into other people. But then he himself was also a very like unhealthy, you know, stalker a lot of the time. So the way we sort of look at other people, you know, in our relation to other people, whether they be celebrities or, you know, uh, people working at McDonald's who we uh, who take our orders, right? Or people on the street that we kind of like see walking by or driving or people we imagine in our heads, right? So it's sort of talking about what is a person? What is identity? Is identity something like uh, a person we write? Does that encapsulate that person? That's kind of the whole sort of weird thing with fiction is it's representative representational in a way but it's also in a way sort of objectifying that character it's saying this is that person this is what they're thinking this is everything and so oh. i don't know do you know what i'm getting at i know what you're getting at that's why in modernism literature, like people took to stream of consciousness to sort of like try to capture how a person is in real time, how they unfold. Like in James Joyce's works, if you read Finnegan's Wake, some portion of the artist also has some stream of consciousness, but he very much perfects in Finnegan's Wake. Uh, oh, uh, Ulysses actually perfects in Finnegan because Finnegan's Wake is almost like dream of consciousness, but uh, or stream of mind. Uh, so. You, you read it and it washes over you. It takes you through the sensations, the emotions, the thoughts, the physiology, the memories, like all the different things, all the different domains that comprises as a person. And you kind of get to experience that. And so like, there's this sense of like, we have, like it goes into my conversation with Joshua that I sent you about what, the, how, what I was talking about with uh, link mediation and representation like how to like get at each other or get at ourselves, how like almost every single encounter, every single interaction either links you, it mediates you, or it represents you in some form, or it also modifies you. It also affords to you how you can transform yourself or how you can conform yourself or, and so on. So there are multiple, there's like a complex chemistry that's taking place. And to tie these back to uh, T and TI, I feel like their purpose is like you can take a utility frame for all of them, but you can also take a sort of like uh uh because TI is also considered an identity function, but it's almost like it has this feature of if you use the different similarity schema that I provided, it has this feature of different types of attachments and similarities of attachment with what's personal and what's not personal and with how you objectify and how you personify. Because there's this feature of like you're in person, you're personifying and impersonifying things, like the feeling functions all personify and the thinking functions all impersonify. So even personality becomes like a per, an impersonal thing when you're engaging or thinking about it, while with feeling personality or even objects can become 
a personal thing where hey, it takes on a life of its own. And Michael Pierce actually talks about this in his Molten Beams, where he talks about the different extremes of, I don't really remember the categories that he used, like some something was romantic or vitalistic or emotive, like almost animalistic, like animals, animalism, which was more feeling. And then you get the objectification with mechanism, where everything is pure mechanics, pure parts and leverage and connectedness, but it's connectedness towards a goal or connectedness for the sake of rigidity or for the sake of maintain a coherence, but it's not actually dynamic. It's not actually going beyond itself. It's not transcending itself, which goes into other categories that come into be with transcendence and quality and how you evaluate yourself. <clears throat> that. So these all factor in and like, it's, it's fascinating with say like, cause I wish there was more avenues. I knew how to explore this, but I'm curious as to how the thinking functions sort of, uh, how they explore non-normal experiences like religious or spiritual or mystical experience. Because you can see their uses in different religions. You see how they play out, how people try to use them or how people try to come to metaphysical understandings, metaphysics in the Aristotelian sense af after the physics and also metaphysical in the sense of like dealing with the paranormal or dealing with alternative realms or dealing with dreams that feels like an alternative realm itself. Like that's something that's not uh, normative in the real sense and the sense of what we characterize as real with sequence and things persisting and things coming together and coming apart but there's a sort of like uh different types of warping different types of uh speeds acceleration relativity like all those different domains all the different categories that comprise reality and stuff like that so i think that's one of the, some of the things that tends to go on with the thinking functions where they try to get you a grip on these different things. And the reason why I'm even able to talk about these things is because of the thinking functions, specifically with TI. Like I only use TE like in physical things. Like if I'm getting something done where I know what's the step to take, what's the next step, how do I stitch it together? But I think there's also a feature of NI there too, where I, I get the big picture of how things will interact. And then I sequence them and then I act on them and bring them about. So then it becomes procedural and it goes into procedural memory and stuff like that. So yeah, I rambled about lots of stuff, whatever. I think this this goes into something about TETI, which I think is important, which is that like the thing, the thing about how the axes are is that um you can really understand them as like digital versus analog. Yeah. So like with all the concomitant sort of uh, ideas, like, for instance, um, digital things are machine things that we're usually like disinterested in, and they're just kind of procedural going from one step to the next, you know, like a proof, a geometric proof, and they're algorithmic. And they're also subject to the same sort of criticisms, like a la uh 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 Gerdel's incompleteness theorems which can sort of take them down for what they are and uh criticize them but still they have this approximation sort of thing I went into this into in my basketball video how like so I've gotten better at basketball over time uh at least like shooting not like playing the game I don't really play basketball because you know I don't have friends and I could like ask people though, like, um, but when we talk about getting good at things and sort of all that stuff, it can be uh, where TIFE has this thing where it doesn't really care about stuff, but it tries to like solve stuff, right? Yeah. Where, you know, like I'll think when I'm, sort of wanting to talk to somebody like uh, i'll think about like what should i say you know but that would sound stupid or you know like oh i should do this and like oh that was so stupid like the caleb cities video yeah well, i think have a nice meal you too <laughs> <laughs> that was great there's also like with problem solving, that's a feature of the thinking functions. That's one of the areas that they're most, they almost situate us, uh, life itself as a series or 
an analog, a problem, like a qualitative problem or a quantitative problem to solve or to like examine. And like you can say, I think some T users put it as like, they're always searching for problems or they're searching for problems to solve. They're searching for efficiency uh, and defectiveness. They're looking for like the best ways to get at it and go. Or oh, can you turn on uh, it on so I can screen share something? Turn what on? Oh, screen. How do I turn it on? I don't know. Okay, yeah, I turn it on. Most okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Simultaneously. Screen share. All right. Um, I wanted to share this video. Hey everyone, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. <laughs> Hey, Jan, don't reply to me. Uh, oh, didn't have it yet. That means you have to shut the f up. I love being unhinged in the workplace. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Just don't talk. To, don't talk to me till don't talk to me till I've had my coffee. Well, I guess this work won't be done by itself, will it? Ooh, is that a delicious snack? <laughs> help me. Just help me. Talk to me, please. Help. I need help. Please. Talk to me. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so uh what were you saying? I don't remember what I was saying. I well, think I was talking about problem solving. Yeah. Uh how T I T are both involved problem solving. While T looks for problems and T I almost thinks of a situation as almost situation as it almost frames situations as a problem. While yeah. Two, yeah. So, 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 like you were saying about share the screen, by the way, so it can get unshare. Back. Yeah. So you can get back to your screen. Uh, you 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 as a full picture. Stop share. Yeah. So I was thinking, uh, what you said in the video last video. What? How much time do we have left? About any and se, and I how know. they kind of, uh, they cohere. But, but don't adhere. Don't add here, right? Yeah. So I was thinking that's kind of like, say you have like a, a sort of part where, like, say you had a, a guitar and you had like a amplifier for it, but then say it's like inbuilt versus not inbuilt, and so I think. SE and any are like not inbuilt. So there's an accessory idea to them. Like when I'm saying the things that I'm saying, the things that I'm saying are accessories. So you could put them on like earrings and be like, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. But then when you take that literally, right? And the guy's like choking to death and he just, the other guy just like looks at his cup of coffee and it's like, I'm not talking to him. He hasn't had his coffee yet. <laughs> right yeah so there is a sort of and i actually have this cup too this shows my si actually that i'm like look i have this cup too i'm like the guy in the video it's like reference humor <laughs> um so te then would have this thing with a uh, function where you, you don't have to cohere to problem solving because it always adheres to problem solving. And I think with that whole axis, it's like we say about our friend Joshua L or you said, is yeah. that he's always like too self-serious about stuff. And I think that's because he's like fully analog. So he has all that stuff where you know, the, the, the stereotype is that things that are artisan made are better because they have like the skill in them and the personality and all that shit. Right. Which, you know, of course, Joshua L is pretentious, but that's kind of the enjoyable part about him is that he approaches everything with pretension. Whereas we approach, I approach things completely cynically as like, I don't fucking give a shit, you know, about anything whatsoever. It, I only give a shit in so far as others compel me to give a shit, right? Whereas he sort of gives a shit from the basis of like, you know, philosophical first principles, which is why I think he's an interesting person because he's pretentious in a way and sort of like in all that stuff, but he's also sort of self-aware about that. Um, 
I'm afraid of Americans. Um, but that's because he's all analog. And so he sees it all as, you know, he has control over it and he wants to have control over it because TEFI sort of goes, FI is like, uh, I'm interested in this. And TE need, goes like, I need to solve this problem in the simplest way possible. Then um, how do the perception axes work differently? Well, we said SE, you're like the needle versus any, you're like the clothing giving the needle its needleosity, right? So for instance, you could still be clothing if, you know, instead of being woven by a needle, you were kind of glued together like uh, Lady Gaga's uh, bacon dress or something like that, right? Hmm. So I think the way those kind of differ is that one looks at, you know, how to do things in the simplest way possible, which, you know, it's similar to TE, but uh, TE is more about learning how to do those things. And SE is more about just like doing those things. Yeah. So they're slightly different. TE can lean more towards like a managerial side, while SE leads almost more toward a sort of uh, experimental sort of uh, adrenaline junkie side where it'll do stuff and it, it's not even really, it doesn't even care if it's useful. It just wants to do stuff with its hands and stuff and to sort of like get it done, which leads to the kind of like the NI contrasting, you know, does this have a purpose? While TE does stuff for a purpose, but then it leads to the contrasting FI, you know, do I actually want to do this, you know, myself, which, yeah. Yeah. And you get that, like, TI and any, like, to get on the other half of that. It's like TI and any both kind of deconstruct. They also both uh, break things apart and they both kind of branch out. Like, and TI almost has, like, that rhizomatic feature to it as far as algorithms go where almost any rule can be any like anything can be a rule and like oh access any kind of rule any kind of unfolding it'll access multiple logics any kind of like stitching together any kind of relationship it'll take yeah, te is more limiting how much time do we have left because one like minute. i think like my my coworker adam he's more kind of like libertarian and i think that sort of urge comes from like you know it it you have to provide usefulness rather than like keep talking yeah but it, it's ironic because you have dave superpowers versus eric and dave superpowers kind of goes into he wants more his model to fit people and eric i think is a bit more he wants people to fit his model but i don't think also eric is really like that good of a people person because i i think sometimes he's like a bit uh, unethical with like privacy and stuff or just kind of like he's a bit autistic yeah <laughs> I'll, I I'll leave that. Uh, that's i don't comment anything on personally are we wrapping up yeah we're wrapping up i think we've it's talked about different things and we've exhausted them for right now and it's interesting because it's all in the moment for me and there's more we could say there's more we could explore but i think that gets at it I mean, I think with SE and E, it's less obvious how they separate because it's like TF is like really obvious. It's like is versus ought, right? 30 seconds. And then, uh, so basically to sum up, the difference between TE, TI is sort of time. It's sort of what it means to be is, you know, it's the do versus no. I don't know if I can sum it up more than that, but yeah, here's for you, XXX something xxx yeah enjoy see ya